dressed in those clothes? These are the clothes I usually wear. Ah, but today is not a usual day. For you, maybe it isn't. For me, it's just like any other day. But you can't wear those clothes to the church. I'm not going to the church. But you gotta go. You're the best man. I will not go to your wedding. No, you'll be very unhappy. Please, Jacques. No. Good morning, Pierre. Good morning, Tom. That's no way for a man to shave. Someday you might make a slip with that razor and cut your head off. Why don't you pull them out with tweezers and it'll last longer? <laughs> this is not a happy day for poor Jacques. Well, Jacques always loved Lily. I know. But Lily loves me. Huh. All the women love Pierre. Pierre loves only one woman. I won't be able to come to the wedding. Why not? I'll have to help Jacques. I'm sorry, Pierre. I did want to see you and Lily get married. Here. What's this for? It's a wedding present for you. Now that you've taken on a wife, you'll need a new knife to open up the oysters. <laughs> Once you come to the wedding, it won't seem right. Quick. Come on, Tom. Come on, Tom. I don't know you, but I've heard about you, Callie. You're the old Grigri woman. Uh, what do you want? You come with Callie. Child's very sick. Cobb, who are you talking to? Callie, the Grigri woman. Says she's found a sick child, wants us to come with her. child. What happened to her? I don't know, but Kelly know how to cure her. You take her to my cabin. My cabin is down there, right through there. You carry her, huh? What you do? You want her to die? Oh, go away, Grigri woman. You take her to my cabin. Kelly, know how to make her well again. Hi. Who are you? 
Shagio. At least you can tell me your name. What is it? Is it Marie? Marianne? Ha <laughs> ha, come on, there is no reason for you to be afraid of Jack. I won't hurt you. What is it? Minette. Minette? It's nice. What does the L stand for? Would you like some coffee, Minette? Why did you do that? Give it back to me. It says give it back to me. I took nothing from you, Minette. Don't lie. Either you or that old man stole them, and I want them back. What do you think we stole from you? As if you didn't know. Those rings are worth a lot of money, Jacques, and I want them back right now. Give them to me. I don't know nothing about any rings. I'm not a thief, and neither is Cobb. If we robbed you, do you think we would be taking you back to the pit with us? Sorry, Jacques. But somebody stole them. Minette. How is she, Jacques? How is she? Not very good, Cobb. You and Lily have a very nice house, Pierre. Yes, you should ask everybody in. Yeah. Something's happened to Jacques. Hey, wait a minute. Uh, Louis, go to my house and get my satchel. What is it? What's happened? Is it my brother? No, no, no. But come on, come on. Doc, why is she shaking like that? She's in a state of shock. Well, she doesn't seem to have any broken bones. Pick her up, Jock. We'll be very gentle with her. Where do you want him to take it, Doc? Your place is the closest. I think Lily'd make a better nurse than Jock. You better stay with Pierre and Lily. You don't mind, do you, Pierre? Of course he doesn't. Let's go. 
Take it, Bill. I told you I don't know. Poor Pierre. What do you mean, poor Pierre? I feel sorry for him. Why? It's his wedding day. No man wants two women staying in his house on his wedding day. Poor Pierre. <laughs> <laughs> oh, she'll sleep for a couple of hours. Will she be all right, Doc? It's nothing serious. As soon as she wakes up, you come get me. You don't look too well, Pierre. I think I got some pills that'll help you. Take a couple of those every two hours, you'll sleep like a baby. <laughs> well, someone has to take care of her. But it doesn't have to be you. Today's the first day that I'm your husband and you're my wife. I know. How do you know? Doc Opie gave her something to make her sleep. The minute she wakes up, she moves to somebody else's house. I'll hang up your clothes. Then I'll fix you some dinner. You hungry, Pierre? Yes. I'm very hungry. Don't you like my cooking, Pierre? Who can eat? <coughs> She's awake. Doc Opie said to let him know the minute she woke up. <coughs> well, who are you? Would you like something to eat? No, thank you. I'm going to get Doc Opie, and I'll be right back. If you need anything, you just call Pierre. You tell Doc she's got to stay someplace else. I have a cigarette, please. Go away. Sit down. You're not afraid of me, are you? Looks to me like someone gave you a pretty bad beating. No one beat me. I was thrown by a horse. You're not very friendly, Pierre. You don't like me, do you? If you got to know me, I think you'd like me. Well. When Doc gets here, you're leaving when he leaves. But where will I go? I don't know. A rich woman like you must have some fine house someplace. Where do you live? <laughs> what makes you think I'm rich, Pierre? My wife said your clothes are very expensive. Your wife is right. I know why you want me out of your house. Good. Then I don't have to explain it to you. 
why you are afraid of me. What makes you think I'm afraid of you? Don't you know? No. Hi, Jack. How long has it been since you've eaten? A long time, Doctor. Oh, with a little food and some rest, you'll get your strength back in no time. But I can't stay here in the hose, Don. You can stay here as long as you want to, Minette. You see? You're among friends. All you gotta do is concentrate on getting well. Lily, get this young lady some food. And uh, take Pierre and Jacques with you. I want to be alone with my patient. Jacques, why don't you stay and have supper with me? Oh, us? you don't want company on your wedding night, Lily. One more isn't gonna make any difference. I can't stay. Good night, Lily. Good night, Jacques. And remember, you'll always be welcome in our home. Jacques, you say Manette's feeling all better? He is? Then why is she still staying at Lily's and Pierre's? Well, if she was staying at your house, would you send her away? No, but my wife would. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, why did you do that? You've been acting like her servant ever since Manette came here. Lily. She's a very bad woman. Oh, Pierre, how can you say that? Because it's the truth. How do you know? Look, she tells us nothing about herself. We, we don't know where she comes from, where she lives. We don't even know her last name. If she's rich, why would she want to live in a place like the pit? Why? Huh, Lily? Morning, Monet. Good morning, Lily. Pierre. Lily, honey, it's very kind of you letting me wear your clothes. Oh, I'm sure they're not as nice as the ones you're used to wearing. I'll fix your breakfast. Thank you, Lily. You must have a last name. What is it? Lanier. Why do you stay here? I find the pit very interesting. You must have lived someplace before Jacques found you and brought you here. Where was it? All right, don't answer. But I'll tell you one thing. Today's the last day you stay in my house. Good 
morning, Jacques. Good morning, Minette. Shame on you, Jacques. This is the first time you've come to see me, sir. I didn't come to see you. I came to talk to Pierre. Oh? He's inside. I know. I'll talk to him later. Jacques. What is it, Minette? Something wrong? Yes. Oh, Jacques, I don't know what to do. Lily's been so good to me, I'd... I'd never do anything to hurt her, but... I like Lily very much, Jacques. You seem to like Pierre very much, too. Or you wouldn't... I hate... Oh, I know you are his brother, and this is not a nice thing to say to you, but... I hate Pierre. If you hate Pierre so much, why do you stay in his house? I'll tell you. But not here. What is it that you go to tell me, Minette? You give me a word, you not tell Lily. Well, the first time that I stayed at Pierre and Lily's house, the doctor gave me something to make me sleep. I don't know how long I slept, but when I woke, Pierre tried to make love to me. Don't you believe me? Oh, I know what you say. It's true. Then why don't you say something? Just before I came into the house that night with Lily and Doc. I passed by the bedroom window. I saw you and Pierre in each other's arms. You didn't seem to mind Pierre making love to you. I hated it, but I was so weak I couldn't stop him. I tried, but he... Oh, I understand why you're so cold and why you think... I'm sorry, Minette. I thought... I know what you thought. What kind of a woman do you think I am? Please don't cry, Minette. I'm a fool, a stupid fool. You know, the first time I saw you, I thought that you were the most beautiful woman I've ever seen. I still think so, Minette. Will you forgive me? I didn't want to stay at Pierre and Lily's, but... Pierre said if I left, he'd tell everybody he was going to accuse me of horrible things, Jacques. Don't you worry about Pierre. He'll accuse you of nothing. I'll see to that. Thank you, Jacques. Jacques, I'm so alone. You don't know what a terrible feeling it is not to have anyone in the world care what happens to you. I care, Minette. Do you care? Why, you don't even know me. Jacques, I've got to find some place to stay. Don't you think you should go home, Minette? I have no home to go to. But you must live someplace. Where? If I only... Oh, please, please don't ask me any more questions, Jacques. All right. You could stay here if you want to. Oh, I could do that. People would talk. They'll have nothing to talk about. You stay here and I'll move in with Cub. You're so kind, Jacques. Jacques! Jacques! I've got to go, Minette. Jacques. Huh? You forgive me? For what? For calling you a thief. Oh. <laughs> that. I've forgotten all about that. Minette. Somebody stole your rings. It must have been old Callie. Who's Callie? The old Greek Greek woman who found you unconscious near Oyster Shell Road. I thought you found me. No, no, Callie found you first, then came and got Cub and me. We are going back to La Forge Country, Minette. I'll stop in on old Callie. If she's got your rings, I'll get them back. You know, all the Greek Greek thieves. 
Yeah. How can I ever repay you for all you've done? Oh, it's nothing. I, I've done nothing. Goodbye, Nina. Goodbye, Sha. Well, if we're going to get any moss today, we better get started. Cobb, hmm? you mind if I bunk at your place for a while? I right, sure, Jacques. You can stay with me as long as you like. Cobb, today we work real hard. Now that I'm a married man, I gotta make lots of money. Poor old Jacques. He looks like he'd like to kill me. Time will make everything all right, Pierre. I hope so. I love him like a brother. <laughs> What's she doing in Jacques' house? Manette is gonna stay there. Are you jealous, Pierre? Are you crazy? She's a bad woman. She shouldn't be staying in Jacques' house. Well, she may be bad for you because you have a wife, but she isn't bad for Jacques. Maybe she'll make him forget that he's in love with Lily. All right, Jacques. Mind if I go with you, dear Jock? <laughs> no, Minette. You're welcome. Fishing than for collecting moss. Cobb? Uh, huh? Where did Minette go? Came ashore to look for Callie. Jock? I'm sorry Lily doesn't love you. 
I almost wish she loved you instead of me. I know how much you love Lily. Why do you say it like that? Never mind, dear. I don't want to talk to you. Well, you're going to. I've got some things to tell you. So Minette's going to be staying at your place, huh? Well, now, you listen to me. You better shut up, dear. I'm not going to shut up until you hear what I have to say. If you don't like Minette, why do you let her stay on with you and Lily? I didn't want her to, but she wouldn't leave. I should have told Lily that very first night what she was. Telling your wife that you tried to make love to another woman on your wedding night? It wouldn't be nice, would it, dear? Is that what she told you? She didn't have to tell me. I saw you myself. I got to tell you. She forced her love on me. Jack, she's a tramp, a nymphomaniac. <laughs> Listen to me. Let me tell you what happened. No, Jack. No, no, no. No way. Now you're going to listen to me. Maybe that'll cool you off and you'll listen to me. come back and pay old Callie a visit. I was told that you were the one who found me. That's right. If I hadn't have found you, you might have died. Well, I came here to thank you, Karen. Well, that's very sweet of you, dearie. Not many people think so kindly of poor old Callie. But I was just going to sit down and have some soup. Won't you join me? No, thank you, Callie. I can only stay a minute. Oh, you can stay longer than that. We have a lot to talk about, dearie, don't we? <laughs> oh, you gave me such a fright, I dropped a dipper into the soup. Oh, I'll have I to... didn't come here to thank you, Callie. I came here to get these. Oh, you stole them from me, and I want them back. I'll give them back to you, dearie. These beautiful rings weren't made for these gnarled fingers of mine. They were made for beautiful hands like yours. But before I give them back, I want to know what you're going to give me. I'm not going to give you anything. These rings are very expensive. Sure, you're going to give old Callie a reward for finding them. You didn't find them. You stole them from me. Now take them off and give them back. I won't take them off until I know how much you're going to give me. I'm old and very poor. <laughs> You'll never get them off that way, dearie. I had a time to get them on myself. I had to use butter to squeeze them on. What are you going to do? Give them a stick to get the dip out, Callie. It'll oh. be much easier to use your hand. Oh, no, dearie, don't. I'll... I want my rings. <laughs>
You're right, Callie. These rings were never meant for the likes of you. And nor for the likes of you either, dearie. Back to the pit. Why? Pierre and Jacques had a terrible fight. Pierre's hurt real bad. Well, now, I wonder what they were fighting about. What do men usually fight about? Did he carry on like that when he fell in the pulling hook, Cobb? What'd you pour on me? Whiskey? Oh, no, indeed. Whiskey's only to be taken internally. Sit <laughs> down here. Let me bandage it. That shoulder will stiffen up on you in the morning. You won't be able to use it. It'll be two or three days before you can go back to work. Maybe that's just as well. Keep you and Jacques apart. Give him time to cool off. Here comes Lily. How much do you owe you, Doc? One dollar. Five dollars for taking care of Manette. Not me. I ain't responsible for her. I treated her in your house. Miss Lanier has cost me enough already. If she owes you five bucks, you better get it from her. What happened? Nothing serious, Lily. Thanks, Doc. Uh, did you say Lanier? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, take care of him, Lily. Keep those two birds apart until this wing heals. Lanier. Nanette Lanier. Somehow that has a familiar ring. You know, if it wasn't for Cobb, that fool Jacques would have killed me. Yeah, why do you hate Lynette so? Never mind. You just stay away from her. Why? Because I'm your husband and I'll tell you to. Where are you going? Take these back to Manette. All right. But you come right back here. I brought your clothes, Annette. Thank you. Excellent seller. They're almost like new. What's the matter, Lily? Oh, I've never seen such beautiful rings. They are beautiful. But your husband must be very rich. Jacques, we've been partners ever since Papa died. I want to keep it like that. I don't. From now on, we are partners no longer. Please, Jacques, you can't do this. Oh, save your breath, Lily. He's a crazy man. Crazy men don't make sense. Look, Jacques, we got a jeep, two boats, barges, equipment. What about that? There's a list of everything we own. Half you keep, half I keep. That's fine. But what about Cobb? 
You can't split him in half. Todd, you've always liked Pierre the best. You better work for him. No, Jacques. Even though I hit you on the head, I, I like you both the same. You work for Pierre. Coming. You mustn't find you. No, of course not. Oh, no, not that way. Go the back door. Oh, you're back early, Pierre. I told you to stop seeing him in that. I'm going to see her, and I'm going to talk to her any time I want to. Just because you don't like her, there's no reason for me not to. I'm your husband, and you do what I tell you to. She's a bad woman. You always say that, but you never tell me why you think she's bad. Well, you just take my word for it. It's what I say she is. Besides, I, I think she's done something wrong. That's why she's down here in the pit, where nobody can find her. What makes you think anybody's looking for her? Well, why else would she be staying here? Well, maybe she's staying here because she's in love with John. You know, he's just fool enough to fall in love with her. But Manette doesn't love him. You can bet your life on that. Now, you stay away from her. You think you know everything, don't you? No. But I know everything there is to know about women. Oh, you do, huh? Mm-hmm. Well, I don't know how many girls I've turned down to ask me to marry. But when you propose, I accept it. You know why? No, what? I never asked you to marry me. You're the only girl I ever asked to marry me. You know why? Because you love me. Because my Lily's the sweetest little girl in the whole world. You two ought to do that inside, not out here. We got an audience. <laughs> Hello, Doc. I was just going to fix some coffee. Would, would you like some? Well, Lily, it didn't look to me much like you were thinking about making coffee. Oh. What's on your mind, Doc? Minette Lanier. What about her? Well, you don't need a doctor to tell you your brother's in love with her. Jacques said he found her up on a road in the Lafouche interior. You know, that's up near Grange Hill. A lot of rich people live in Grange Hill. So? Pierre, sometimes it pays to be a literate man. Here's a month-old copy of a New Orleans newspaper I subscribe to. I ain't interested. I think you'll be interested in this. of it. Well, the 
Lynette Lanier, who's living over in Jacques' houseboat, sure didn't commit suicide. Obviously. Maybe she's a cousin or something. Maybe. Well, there's one way to find out. I'll take this paper up and show it to her. I'll show it to her. You stay here and have some coffee with Lily. Without knocking. Seems that I'm not the only Lynette Lanier in the world. Didn't you know that woman? No. That's funny. Why? There are probably a hundred Lynette Laniers that I don't know. Not in Grange Hill. There was another Pierre Guillaume who lived around here. I'd certainly know him. Now, what makes you think I come from Grange Hill? Well, with Jacques Andre, you weren't more than 10 miles from there. Well, I figure that's where you come well, from. Well, you figure wrong, Pierre. If you don't come from Grange Hill, where do you come from? Where I come from is none of your business. Those rings must cost a lot of money. Who gave them to you? Maybe nobody gave them to you. Maybe you stole them. Or maybe you got them in another way. I'm not a thief, and I'm You're not a thief. You're worse than a thief. How dare you calling me? Yeah. Come on. Doc told me what he read in the newspaper. Did you tell Minette about it? Uh huh. Well, what'd she say? Nothing. Come on, take me a little trip. I'll be back in a while. Where are you going? Grange Hill. Let me go with you, Pierre.
Pardon me, sir. Could you tell me where I could find the grave of Manette Lanier? Right over there. Thank you. I can find the grave of Manette Lanier. You don't have to go much further. You'll find her husband right over yonder. Drinking himself to death right alongside her. Thank you. Who are you? I'm Pierre. Pierre Guillaume. And this is my wife, Lily. Go away. Are you Clay Lanier? Yes, I'm Clay Lanier. Did you know my wife? No, I didn't. What are you doing here? I know a girl who has the same name as your wife, and I thought they might be related. My wife had no relation by the same name. There was only one Manette Lanier. There'll never be another. She's a wonderful woman. Sure she was. And now that you know that neither myself or my wife was related to your friend, there's no reason for you to remain here in war. I know why you're here. Curiosity. Yeah? You want to know how my wife killed herself? No, I tell you, I know this. This girl. is it right here. This is the pistol that she used to remove herself from this unhappy world. She took this gun and she pressed it to her temple. Fire. Except my wife made sure that the chambers weren't empty. You see, Manette was a much braver human being than I. Now go away. I don't want strangers ogling at my wife's grave. Go. Go away! How much whiskey you gotta drink before you can walk like that? Mr. Lanier, where do you live? Where's your home? Newspaper clipping. That's what brought you here? That's right. About a month ago. Jacques, my brother? Yes. He was picking moss in the bayou up at La Foche. La Foche. They're here. Callie, that old Grigri woman. She come to him and said she had found a girl lying in the road in the woods, unconscious. Well, he, he went and there she was, still as could be. Well, he brought her home and she was in pretty bad shape. This woman. Was she wearing riding clothes? Yes, sir. Bird. Must be her. Oh, I'm sure it's not Mr. Manier. Well, there's one way to find out. I've got a picture of this Nina in the house. I get it. He must never find her. Please, sir. You must tell Mr. Lanier the picture he shows you is not the woman you know as Minette Lanier. Why? Because I don't want him to ever find her. If he does, I know something's going to happen. Is that her? Is that her? No, sir, I, I've never seen that woman before. You sure? Yes, sir. If I wasn't a married man, well, I sure could go for her. Who is she? That is Nina Dupre. Someday I'll find that woman. 
when I do, I'll kill her. Kill her like she killed my Lynette. Mr. Ramirez, you told me your wife committed suicide. She killed herself, all right. Because Nina and I gave her no other choice. Did we? Did we, Bert? But, Mr. Lanier, I don't think Mr. and Mrs. Gill are interested in hearing about her. Oh, they're interested, Bert. Very interested. You know all about Nina Dupre? Tell him. Tell him, Bert. Tell him. We better start for home, Pierre. Bert. Yes, sir. We're leaving now. I want to thank you very much for pretending you didn't recognize Mr. Prey's picture. Why didn't you want me here? Killing her won't bring Mrs. Lanier back, and it won't make Grange Hill the way it used to be before that woman came here. I did you a favor. How about you doing one for me? I'll do anything I can for you, Mr. Gill. Then tell us why Mrs. Lanier killed herself. All right. About six months ago, Mrs. Lanier was training a green horse to take the jumps. I never saw a woman who could handle a horse like Mrs. Lanier. Well, at the last second, the horse refused to take the jump. Mrs. Lanier took an awful spill and broke her back. Doctors say she wouldn't be able to walk for a long time. But on account of the accident, Mr. Prey came to Grange Hill. Seeing saw Mrs. Lanier couldn't move about none. Doctors thought time would pass easier for her. She had a woman her own age to stay with her, to be a sort of companion to her. Instead, she turned out to be a companion for Mr. Lanier. The first time I saw the way she looked at Mrs. Lanier, I knew there was going to be trouble. In the beginning, Mrs. Lanier liked her a whole lot. She felt sorry for her. Have you ever done this kind of work before, Anita? No, ma'am. Mrs. Lanier. We're going to spend a lot of time together, so why don't you call me Minette? Thank you. Dr. Thomas told me you worked in the cotton mill. Mm -hmm. Did you like it? I hated it. <laughs> I'm sure I would, too. Hello, darling. Well, how are you two getting along? Just fine, Clay. No uh, personality clashes? None at all. Well, then it's all settled. Oh, Nina, Bert's driving into town. Probably you'd like to go along with to pick up some clothes. All right, Mr. Lanier. Now, wait a minute, young lady. You must remember you're not a servant in this house. If I can call you Nina, you certainly can call me Clay, right? Thank you. Why? I've got closets filled with clothes, and I won't be able to wear them for a long time. You were almost the exact size before. So if you don't mind wearing my clothes, there's no need for you to go into town. That's a wonderful idea, honey. Time somebody gets some use out of them. Come on. Uh, let's see now. Ah, here's one. Well, looks like it was made for, huh? Oh, it's beautiful. And so are you. I've always said a beautiful girl must wear beautiful things. Isn't that right, darling? Yes, dear. Nina, I hope you enjoy your stay at Grange Hill. I'm sure I will, Clay. Goodbye, darling. In the beginning, Nina and Mrs. Lanier were together all the time. They hit it off real well. They enjoyed each other's company. Evenings, Nina would read to Mrs. Lanier, play cards and things like that. Sometime, Mrs. Lanier would join them. And when he did, Nina would pay no more attention to him than she did to Mrs. Lanier. I always thought because she wore Mrs. Lanier's clothes, she actually thought she was mistress of Grange Hill. Mrs. Lanier suspected what Nina was up to, but I guess she didn't quite know what she could do about it. It 
wasn't long before Nina was spending most of her time with Mr. Lanier. They would meet every morning. Mr. Lanier would give her riding lessons. And to see them together, no one would ever think she was hired to be a companion to Mrs. Lanier. The way she threw herself at him was scandalous. Whenever he drove into town, Nina always seemed to figure out some reason for going along with him. And she always managed to get as close to him as possible. Miss Lanier watched them from the bedroom window. And she was very concerned with what she saw. Until it was too late, Mr. Lanier never seemed to be aware of what Nina was up to. He thought she was just being friendly because she was grateful to him for bringing her to Green Hill. Mrs. Lanier stood it as long as she could. And when she could stand it no longer, she decided something must be done about Nina. Bert said you wanted to see me, Lanier. I do, Nina. Clay said I was learning to ride almost as well as you used to. Nina, I won't be needing you any longer. What do you mean? I mean I want you to leave Grange Hill and I want you to leave tonight. Why do you want me to leave? I don't feel I owe you any explanation. Let us just say I made a mistake not treating you like a servant when you... I'm not your servant. Anyone else is. I'm every bit as good as you are. I know why you want me to leave. I'm sure you do. But there's no need to continue this discussion. You may take any of my things you like particularly. You're not getting rid of me that easy, Nanette. I like it here, and I'm going to stay. Clay loves me, so if anybody leaves Grange Hill, it'll be you. Is there something wrong? Nina. Nina. Troubling you. This is goodbye, Clay. What do you mean goodbye? Where are you going? Away from Grange Hill. Why don't you like it here? You know I do. I don't want to leave, but I have to. Why? Clay, Manette has been awfully good to me. I like her so very much. It would kill me if I ever did anything that would hurt her. And Manette's very fond of you, too, Nina. She wouldn't be if she knew how I felt. Oh, Cliff, I'm so ashamed of myself. Don't cry, Nina. There's no reason for you to be ashamed of yourself. Oh, yes, there is, Clay. I'm in love with you. Oh, Clay, I love you so. Mm -hmm.
not really our Nina, fault. Nina, I'm sorry. We shouldn't have done what we did. <laughs> You killed her. That's the last we ever saw of Mr. Prey. But Mr. Lanier has never stopped trying to find her. I hope he never does. Killing her won't bring Mr. Lanier back. No, Bert, nothing can do that. You think a lot of Mr. Lanier. He's the finest man I've ever known. Goodbye, Bert. Goodbye, Miss Gill. So long. Bye. Right. Why did they leave without saying goodbye to me? Well, I thought you were still asleep, Mr. Lanier, and they seemed so anxious to get started for home, they wanted me to say goodbye for them. Mm -hmm. Bert, do you think they recognize that picture, Nina? Oh, I'm sure they did, Mr. Lanier. You heard him say he never saw that picture before in his life. Mm -hmm. That's what he said, Bert. But you can't always depend on what people say. Besides, he said that girl had riding clothes on. Get in the car. Yes, sir. What's the matter? I don't want to be there when you talk to her. Why not? I don't know. 
I really don't know, Pierre. I, I guess I feel uncomfortable around you. I really did like her. I'm going home. What are you in such a good mood about? It's a beautiful day. Nina? You didn't tell him where I was, did you? No, I didn't. I don't like you. But I don't want Mr. Lanier killing you either. And I don't want that fool brother of mine thinking he's in love with you. So I'll tell you what I'm going to do. What? I'm going to drive you into Hammond and put you on a bus for New Orleans. But I haven't got any money or clothes. I'll give you money for the bus fare. Well, I'm not going. I'm staying right here. Jock's a poor man. I don't know what you want to stay here for. I need time to decide what... You don't need any more time, honey. Get going. Where is she? Look, I don't blame you for wanting to kill Where is she? Look, Pierre, I don't want to have to kill you, too. But you better stay where you are.
Hammond. Just leave the jeep at the bus station. But he'll follow me. I'll see that he doesn't. Now go on. Beat it. Hey, wait a minute. The safety or what? The ring. Give him to me. No. Then we're staying right here till Clay gets here. He'll kill me. He can't kill you if you're not here. I can't start without the keys, Mr. Lindsay. Give me those keys. No. Bert's right. Killing her won't do any good. You best just try and forget her. It's a long walk back to town. Give me a lift. All right, Peter. Get in the car. Pierre. Goodbye, Mr. Dio. Bye. Bye. Oh, I feel so sorry for Mr. Lanier. Pierre, how did you know Manette was bad? Your husband's a very smart man. And you just remember that, Lily. Pierre! Pierre! You, you better go away for a few days. Go for... away? What for? It's Jacques. He's very angry. He's like a madman. He said he would kill you. I've just done Jacques a big favor. When I tell him the truth, he want to kiss me, not kill me. No, no. Stay away from Jacques. He will not listen to anything you have to say. He'll listen to what I have to say. I know you're mad, but will you just listen to me? Listen to me! You let me out of here, Pierre! Well, now, Lily, maybe Jacques will listen to me. <laughs> 